Welcome to Bring Your Own Grief. I'm your host, R. Glenn Kelly. Are you a guy struggling to wrap your head around the painful emotions of grief? Or are you a woman who wants to get a handle on what's going on in your man's mind or his heart? Are you both travel down the healing path after a loss? Well, in this episode, we're going to talk about the emotions of a grieving man. And you don't want to miss this one. We're going to cover some good stuff, interesting discoveries, and ways to help yourself. And helping yourself can take you a long way down the path of hope and healing. When you have time, I encourage you to see my other videos, vidcasts, and podcasts on male versus female grief and other bereavement topics. You can find them as videos on YouTube here at the BYOG Network and as podcasts on iTunes, uh, Google Play, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, and more. Download them and, and listen on the go. They're informative. Hopefully, you'll find them healing. And they can be a little humorous at times, too. For now, I want to thank you for tuning in to the Bring Your Own Grief Network. If you haven't yet, please make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you find value in this session, in this episode, like it on YouTube and share it with others who are going down the same path of hope and healing as you and I. Listen, this episode deals with male grief topics, I know. But again, it's also intended to help women who support a grieving man by providing insight into what he might be going through. Welcome. I always believe that awareness and understanding of each other is going to be the key to healing together. So, emotions, sadness, confusion, guilt, longing, yearning, so many other painful feelings all hit us after loss, right? And arguably one of the most volatile and caustic is what? Anger. Anger not only impacts us in many, many ways, but it's also the one emotion it can have ill effects on others around us too, right? Now, anger is natural after loss and, and can honestly be very constructive as, as long as you're not harming yourself or others. I have another broadcast on anger, false anger, guilt, false guilt, where I discuss this in better detail. But just know that uncontrolled anger raging out can frighten others and it can drive you to a rush to judgment and and really a rush to some bad action. So be very, very wary. Regardless, when it comes to emotion, angers can be more typical for a man than a woman after loss, right? It may actually pop up before any of the other painful emotions do. For me, I had deep but, but thankfully unfounded anger for the doctors and hospital staff where my son lost his life. See, I put my trust, I put my child's very life in their hands and they betrayed me. Or so I thought at first. And guilt. I also had gut searing guilt knowing my blessed child had looked to me, his father, to be his protector, which was a job I had done valiantly for so many years before that. But I'd failed us both. I would promised to keep the monsters and bad guys away from my child throughout his life and make sure no one ever heard. But I didn't do as I promised, did I? And because of that, I had incredible guilt. I'm sure I'm not alone here, am I, guys? Like anger, it would take me some time to realize my guilts were false guilts. But these emotions, well, they're strong, aren't they? They almost automatically respond for us when something takes place. They can control so much of what we do. Well, no, actually, they don't, guys. Men, we don't let them, do we? Not always, anyway. No, we refuse to feel them, right? I've been there. I'm not going to let my emotions control me. Listen, after I lost my son, I knew immediately that absolutely nothing was ever going to be the same as it was before he passed. There was no return to a normal routine life. But I always knew that I had to survive. I always knew I had to move forward. Now, I certainly didn't want to do it without my Jonathan, but, but there it was. I had no choice. I had to cope somehow. But moving forward meant that every moment of every day from that point forward was going to be painful emotionally. Life was going to hurt from the heartache I felt. Anger, guilt, sadness, longing, there would be pain. And those emotions, those feelings, immediately took up all of my thoughts every day. And concentrating or even mildly functioning for that matter was difficult, if not impossible. Have you been there? 
How was I ever going to get through daily life? I did what most men instinctively do. I took control of my emotions. Men control things, don't they? It's in our DNA. We are systemizers, organizers, and problem solvers. And when all else fails, we take the simplest solutions at times. If we can't resolve the painful emotions, we will shut them out and move on to other things that we can control. And if I wanted to function, then I had to control my emotions. And by control, I mean suppress them, stuff them back inside and ignore them really. Maybe I'll get to them later. But what an incredibly dangerous thing this can be, huh? Most folks don't realize that emotions are just as important in our survival as the nourishment we take into our body, food, water, air. Consider that without emotions, we, we would have never survived our exit from the Garden of Eden or climbed from the primordial ooze, if you're a believer in evolution over God. Fear kept us from doing a lot of things. Happiness drove us to do things. Think about fear, for instance. It kept us from just walking up to the the wild beast that we hunted for food, he could probably do as much damage to us as, as we could to him. Instead, we knew we wanted, because of fear, to hide in the bushes and waited till we had an opportunity to take down that prey. So, we take in emotions on a nonstop basis, day to day. And what comes into the body, guys, must flow back out. Just as everything else that enters or flows into our body comes back out. What we take in, Think about it. What we take in, we get what we need from it and release it back. It's an incredible flowing cycle. We do it with food, water, and air, right? We take it in, we get what we need from it, and we let it out. And no, I'm not talking about what comes out is what we do in the bathroom here. Our, our waste is actually the impurities that the body can't convert and use for energy and function. Food, water, air, and, and let's throw in sunshine all flows into us and we let it flow out through action, through energy, even if that action is just thinking, breathing, or pumping blood. Does the body let it all flow out right away? Not always. Some of it stores for later times to come. You know, actually the, the average healthy adult has more energy in the body as a one ton battery. It's amazing to think of. But what happens when we take in too much to just let out through actions? What happens if we take in more than what our body wants or needs to store? Overload. And over time, the body becomes fatty and unhealthy. It doesn't function as well, does it? I know this. I've been there. I've been heavy and, and very unhealthy in my past, so this really hits home for me. I've been there holding my emotions, too, and I was emotionally unhealthy. Fortunately for me, six months or so after the loss of my son, I became aware that, that emotions aren't meant to be held inside. And that was keeping me from even beginning my journey down a path of grief healing. And I came to realize that my emotions could not be held back. They, they must flow, flow in and then back out of us. I actually have a great analogy that, that I could use for this if you'll allow me. I call it the stream in the forest. Again, emotions flow into the body. They provide nourishment or what we need, and then they must flow back out. Very much like a stream running through a forest. This stream of water provides nourishment and contributes to the natural flora and fauna. And in us, it, it provides our natural little, well, personal ecosystem, if you will. It makes sense, right? A river brings water, rich soil, life to the forest that, are, that surround its banks. Now, as you can imagine, for many streams out there, I want you to think about the busy little beaver that might come along and build a dam across the stream. Once he stops or even retards the normal flow of water, that water begins to build up behind the dam and it floods the surrounding areas and begins to, to change and choke out what was once a beautiful and thriving environment. Not into something good, right? It's drowning out the living, breathing beauty which once relied upon that flow. That scenario deals with throttling back the normal flow of water or our human emotions, if you will. And if you're at all like me, meaning I tended to keep emotions in check because I am a guy, then we built a little dam across our stream long before the loss even happened, didn't we? You put your beaver to work early in life. It actually, it's actually located at the most advantageous spot for a man, right where our emotions might slip out and reveal themselves to others. The heart, right? 
Heaven forbid we let people see we have a soft heart. So now, listen, uncontrolled and unexpected comes the heavy rains, the emotions of grief brought on by the death of your loved one. This deluge of painful feelings flow into you, and they begin to surge downstream or, or through you like a flash flood, roiling and frothing, picking up speed as it goes. It's only following the natural emotional path through and trying to get out of the body. But the dam is there, right? It'll meet that blockage, and it begins to flood backwards, where, where it starts to drown out even more of the beautiful flora and fauna that it can. This is your self-esteem. This is your confidence, your purpose in life, relationship with friends, family, co-workers, even your job, all part of that personal ecosystem I told you. It is who you are. The busy little beaver, you, does feel the pressure. It feels the pain from the loss. It tries to reinforce or strengthen the dam, hold back that huge flow of emotions. But the longer the flow is held back, the higher the drowning emotions impact you and, and who you really are. And it continues to build. And the emotional waters rise until the dam is eventually overrun and, and blown apart, exploding outwards. The results of this can be an escaping cascade of, of raging, raw emotions, rushing frenzied, uncontrolled downstream and out to others, damaging everything it comes into contact with. Friends, family, dreams, hopes, peace and purpose. This new damage is on top of what was flooded and destroyed inside before. Holding back emotions can be incredibly destructive to your healing, to your life, to your peace and purpose. My dam was strong too. My little beaver committed an amazing feat of engineering and built a dam that held back the emotions of my life, then the flood of grief for a very long time. Make no mistake though, it blew. And there was destruction, there was damage, both inside and out. And if any good has come of it though, what was once flooded and dying has come back to life and I'm now doing what I can to repair what that flood destroyed, inside and out. And now, part of the personal goals along my path to peace and purpose, healing, was to study and understand emotions as they relate to humans in general. Really, so I could try to better understand myself, who I was, who I, who I was going to be. I wondered why the emotions were such a driving part of my life and why it was so very difficult to control. After all, holding them in was a natural urge. As, as my initial studies of male emotions told me, it was just another acceptable part of who I am. In reality, what I came to understand is the entire mess is actually a double-edged sword. Weak or strong, emotions are basic requirements for humans, just as essential to life as our heart beating and lungs pumping. We don't have to tell our hearts to beat or our lungs to breathe as this all takes place on a subconscious level. We don't need to think to make these things happen. In large part, we don't consciously have to tell our emotions to work for us either. I was surprised to find our emotions are a leading factor in every decision-making process in our daily lives, regardless of whether that's for survival, pleasure, or even professional choices. Like many, I too was taught to never make business decisions based off of my emotions, as the industry leaders have always preached that logic and rational thought was the only acceptable tool for success. What I discovered, however, was that our emotions are actually the base element in every choice we make, regardless of whether uh, Carnegie Ford or J. Paul Getty wanted to admit it. So let me tell you about a modern day neuroscientist named Antonio Damasio, who recently conducted extensive studies of a large group of patients who had suffered an injury or had some impairment to their brain that eliminated their ability to feel emotions. They couldn't feel happiness or sadness. Much like Mr. Spock of Star Trek, while, while they had no emotions, all other mannerisms of their brain functioned properly, including reason and logic. Unlike Spock in the TV show, however, the patient's lack of emotions kept them from making even the simplest of decisions. During failed attempts to come to a decision, the patients could use and, and they could tell of their logic and reasoning processes, but they couldn't come to a, a concluding selection in every single effort to do so. Quick example, when, when offered a choice of fish or chicken as a meal, the patient couldn't pick between the two. Why? 
there was no ability to determine the reward punishment outcome, a term used by the good doctor. Fisher chicken, of course, is a simple example, just like reward punishment is really the same way as saying happy or sad was what they could not figure out. And it's what it really came down to emotionally. Will our decision in everything we do in life bring us happiness or sadness? If there is no consideration for that, there is no need to do anything. That's how powerful emotions are to our life. We simply cannot push them inside and ignore them. They will come out. And listen, if you can't buy into any of that, I can't deny and you can't deny the conscious and subconscious mind. So let me offer you something that brings a little more clarity. Emotions live primarily in our conscious mind. They might come without your conscious effort, triggered by something that takes place, but you're actively thinking about your feelings in your conscious mind when they are hitting you so hard, like after the loss. Sure, don't let them out. Push them back. You know what happens? Eventually, they will come out, just like the air we breathe, the water we drink. And the air we breathe needs to flow back out. The water we drink needs to flow back out. Refused or ignored by the conscious mind, though, those painful emotions will find a place to come out. But where? In the subconscious mind. That part of you that acts on your behalf without your conscious effort or control. And the subconscious acts without malice or forethought. It, it doesn't think it's doing wrong. Just like telling your heart to beat or your lungs to pump, it now has a function it knows must come out. Your emotions. And those emotions of fear, anger, guilt, and so many others are they're mostly caustic and negative, not who you were before the loss. The subconscious so will release those emotions and without your conscious control when it believes you need the help. And just as your conscious mind can't stop your heart from beating or your lungs from breathing, you can't stop the subconscious actions of escaping emotions. Can you see where the problem is here? An angry, bitter, guilt-ridden person is who you are now, subconsciously, out of your conscious control. Others will no longer know the compassionate, kind, loving person they once knew. Heck, you will no longer know that person either. He becomes left behind by repressed emotions. So look, grief wrapped in those evil, destructive emotions that, that must not in any way become permanent in you have to be addressed. They have to be faced, processed, and released in a controlled manner. They are a powerful human instinct that flow through you like a river. They come in, they must go out. Again, as, as men, we probably had a busy little beaver dam up our river through our forest long before the real storm came. And if you recognize that you need to control its destruction when the flood of grief comes, it will do a great deal to help our journey, your journey towards healing, peace, and purpose. As I've always said, we will never heal completely from our loss, but in order to move forward with that lost loved one in your life, you have to begin the journey. <laughs> Start with that damn little beaver. So, Listen, our time's up for this episode, Emotions of the Grieving Man. Please watch or listen to my additional videos and podcasts on male grief as, as well as the grieving man and woman. We really do process and express our emotions differently. Again, after the loss of a loved one, awareness and understanding of each other can go a long way to helping with the journey of healing. Also, I would like to remind you, if you have not, please subscribe to the BYOG YouTube channel and like and share this video. You may be listening to this on, as a podcast on iTunes, iHeart, or others. If so, please visit the YouTube channel and subscribe there. Simply search for Arglin Kelly. Just FYI, the more subscribers to our channel, the easier it becomes for other grievers to find us in a search. Now, for those interested in more information, immediately I highly recommend ordering any of my award-winning grief and bereavement support books. Sometimes I cry in the shower. A Grieving Father's Journey to Wholeness and Healing. Or The Grief Case, A Man's Guide to Moving Forward in Grief. And Grief Healing 365, Daily Inspirations for Moving Forward to Your New Normal. All are available in paperback and ebook at Amazon and Barnes & Noble or paperback at bookstores everywhere. 
if they don't carry them at the bookstore, ask them to order them for you and tell them to order more for the shelves, please, because others might be looking. You'll also find book trailers on each of these books on the BYOG YouTube channel. They are amazing books for moving forward. So that's it for this session. Thank you for joining me here at the BYOG Network, the place where you bring your own questions, bring your own pains, bring your own unique emotions, and bring your own grief. I am R. Glenn Kelly. May you find peace and purpose.